Well, today I have got a treat for you guys. We're gonna build this amazing space-saving modern industrial table with these swing-out seats. Now we're partnering with a company called Get Back Inc. and they now make a hardware kit that they supply you with the swing-out seats, the pedestals, and all the hardware you need to build this amazing space-saving, very unique table. The kit will have everything you need from templates to nuts and bolts to the pedestals and of course the swing-out seats. This table is six feet long and seats six comfortably. And because there are no chair legs, cleaning up around the table is a breeze. Clean! The unique functional swing out seat design makes it an elegant compact alternative to traditional seating. And it's ideal for small spaces because the seats completely tuck away. The masterfully designed hardware is durable enough to use inside your home or out on your back patio. Yeah. So I am super excited to show you guys how it comes together. Let's head to the shop. So we're gonna kick this off by working on the base. And the base is actually fairly simple. It's gonna be two beams separated by a bunch of spacer blocks. So if we're strategic about this, we could take an eight foot board, and these are the two beam boards. If we cut the beams out, the leftover pieces can actually be glued together and that will be where we cut our blocks from. It's gonna be a little bit tight, but I think we could do it. So let's carefully make those cuts and we could start prepping the beams, but also getting the blocks ready too. The material I'm using for my table is white oak. It's beautiful, heavy, and durable enough for indoor or outdoor use. The first cuts separate the rails from the material that we'll use for the spacer blocks. Each of these pieces needs to be jointed and plain so that we can glue them together to the rough thickness which for now is a little over 3 inches. The two halves are then glued together. After the glue dries, we'll joint and plane again, this time to our final 3 inch thickness. Next we can rip to final width and cross cut all four blocks from the long blank. Now we're going to need to do some pretty careful drilling into these blocks, which means we could make use of a template. So I'm just going to take the paper template and put it onto a piece of MDF. You don't have to do this, but if I am using this to transfer hole locations, I just feel like it's going to start to move around a little bit. And I want to be a little bit more precise than that. So I'm just going to stick this down to a piece of MDF and that should make it a little more robust. The drill press is helpful here as it drills straight and perpendicular to the surface. We'll just make some small pilot holes. We can then use our hard template to transfer the pilot holes to each block. With the little pilot holes in place, we can now use the drill press again to make the full size through holes for the hardware. All right, so that's as far as we're gonna take those internal blocks. Now we can go back to the long rail pieces, get those milled up and drilled. Now for these long rails, we also have a template. You could put that onto, you know, MDF, just like I did for the other one, but it's a little impractical at this point, and I'm only making one of these tables, so something to think about if you're gonna make multiples. Uh, but for this one, all I need to do is stretch it across the rail. I have each one of my crosshairs there, and I'm just going to put a little dot that's going to show where that center line is, and this will not be used again. Once I have that, I could drill my holes and then use the first rail as a guide for the second rail. And you could probably make your life a little bit easier by then taking a mechanical pencil or just a sharp pencil and darkening your hole. So once the template's gone, we'll be able to actually see this thing. Now,
Now with the holes in one of our rails, the strategy I'm gonna employ is bringing the two rails together in the orientation they will go in the final piece. And this way, if we bring them together like that and clamp them, we can use the existing holes to carry through and put a starter hole into the second rail. Now the advantage of doing it this way is if there's any irregularity in the squareness or the perpendicular per perpendicularity of these holes, it carries through. Because if you've got a big bolt that has to go through there, and let's say you have one hole that's slightly off angle like this and the other hole slightly off angle like that, you can't get a bolt through there. But if you go off angle here and then continue slightly off angle into the next piece, you could still get a straight bolt through there. So I think that's a way to kind of reduce error. And that's also something to think about, even though I haven't done it here, I've already got my blocks. These big blocks are already drilled. Well, one strategy for this might be to bring all these pieces together, take your big long template, and then just make sure the holes that go through the blocks, you're kind of drilling them all at one time. And especially if you're using a hand drill instead of a drill press, that might be a good strategy to make sure everything is accurately drilled. All right, so let's just clamp this thing together and start drilling. Now with all of the holes drilled, we have to make sure everything is in alignment and it's probably a good idea to do this before we're trying to attach the seats and the rest of the metal components in this table. So in my case, I've done something just a little bit different. I actually want my blocks to sit slightly proud of the surface and so I'm gonna give them a little bit of a round over. You don't have to do this. It could just be kind of flush at the top and flush at the ends, but I thought this would add to the sort of timber framing rustic feel of a piece like this. So mine uh, require a little bit of extra work. So what I've cut here are shims that will raise the rails up just the right amount to allow me to have that offset and you'll see how that works in just a minute. So I'm gonna put both of my rails on these shims Try not to knock it over. That effectively raises it up slightly. Then when I bring these together with my blocks in there, you can see that the blocks are now going to sit proud uh, about an eighth of an inch at the top and proud an eighth of an inch at the bottom. And of course the outside ones will do that too. So once we're in this position, you just wanna align your blocks where they're supposed to go and then get your hardware and double check. Make sure that everything actually goes all the way through. Let's just check this second one here. Not too bad. Now the size of the hole is actually intended to give you a little bit of wiggle room there for this bolt to go through. If you have problems, what you could do is grab your drill and then if you have, let's say, you know, one of the holes or two of the holes just aren't quite allowing that bolt to go through easily enough, you can clamp this guy together if you're absolutely sure about its location, clamp it together, remove whatever bolt you have in there, and then just kind of drill in from both ends and you could sort of free up that space a little bit. Just get rid of the material that's in the way. But at this point, this is all looking pretty good and I think we could probably uh, start sanding and then doing roundovers before we actually apply these to the metal base. Since we don't want to have roundovers where two edges meet, I need to draw some lines that tell me where to stop the bit. Sometimes on something like this, I'll even use a Sharpie to make it crystal clear where the roundover goes and where it doesn't go. All right, now our base parts are pretty much done and it may seem a little bit out of sequence to start talking about finishing right now when we still need to make a top and we still need to make some seats, but you could really divide this project into three portions. And since this one is already done, these parts are just gonna be sitting around the shop. It's not a bad idea to get a coat of finish on them and then put them away until we need them later for assembly. So that's what we're gonna do. Just gonna apply some hard wax oil. So while that finish dries, we can actually move on to constructing the top, which is really just a big, thick panel. 
If you make your table using a nice dense species like white oak, the excellent workout you'll get is just an added bonus. But for a table like this, you really want something that's pretty beefy stock that complements the impressive scale of the Get Back hardware. Each piece is jointed, planed, and then ripped to width, and then jointed one more time so that each glue line is as clean as possible. On large panels like this, I like to use dominoes to keep the pieces in alignment. Not totally necessary, but it does help. You can use splines, dowels, or biscuits as an alternative. Or just use nothing at all and clamp some calls across the whole panel. After the glue dries, we'll clean up the top using a cabinet scraper. Then we can give the entire surface a nice sanding up to 180 grit. The ends of the table are cut square using a track saw. Finally, the same finish that we used on the base components. I'm finishing one side at a time, so after each coat, I go around with a paper towel to clean up any drips. Even if you don't think you have any, you might want to do this step anyway, as there's nearly always something that you can catch with the towel. Now the final bit of woodworking that we need to do is to construct the seats. These will be made from the same material, we'll glue two pieces together, and then we'll actually use the lathe to create this shape. Each seat will require two pieces in order to get the diameter that we're looking for. So these get milled to rough size and then edge glued together. Once dry, the circular shape is drawn and we can cut the bulk away at the bandsaw. Now it's time to mount it to the lathe. I actually get made fun of for not using my lathe enough. It's all good. While I always enjoy my time at the lathe, it's like my boy Huey Lewis always said, it's hip to be square. So anyway, I force this blank into submission, making a little scoop for the booty and a nice bevel on the underside. The sky's the limit here, as you could put as much or as little effort into the seat as you want. It's a good place for some creative expression, allowing you to add your own unique flair to the final presentation. So the seats have finish on them, all the other parts have finish on them. The last thing to do is to head into the house and assemble this beast. When I say the hardware is beefy, I mean it. You can certainly move it alone, but you'll find it more fun if you have some assistance. I found it best to get the spacing of the legs just right before bringing in the rails. This will prevent having to slide the pieces on the floor too much when lining up the holes. We'll start by inserting the bolts through the legs. I got mine started. Yep. Abby, move it. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. For the seats, we found it easiest to have one person hold the seat hardware while the other holds the block in place and then inserts the bolts. Rinse and repeat for the rest of the seats. Not a salt lick. Back off. <laughs> Once everything is hand tight, I snug down the nuts on both sides until the seat hardware is 100% secure. One 
for you. One for you. One for you. Now we can attach the seat tops. Boom shakalaka. And finally, the tabletop. With the top centered on the base, we can pre-drill and drive some screws to secure it to the base. All right, so here it is. Now, I gotta tell you, I've seen pictures of this and I knew what I was building, but it wasn't until it was in place, all the hardware was installed and the seats were in place, that I really got a feel for just how visually impressive and unique this thing is. The hardware is super heavy duty. John and I were testing it out. He would sit on one side, he weighs a little bit more than I do, and I'd sit on the other, and you don't feel any flex at all. And with the seats coming out as far as they do, you might expect that sensation of something not feeling stable. You've got none of that here. This thing is rock solid. And I know some of you are thinking, the way this is designed, it's gonna be a, a knee banger, right? Well, it's not, and actually, that was very surprising. When you go all the way to the point, well, as far as you would wanna go, you see my stomach is you know, at the front here, uh, my knees are totally clear. They've designed it so that the rail is low enough that you're not gonna collide with it. Look at that, perfectly clear, perfectly designed. If you're looking for an American industrial style table made with hardware that comes with a lifetime guarantee, you should head to getbackink.com to pick up a swing out seat table hardware kit. And if you're one of the first 25 people to order a kit, you'll even get a free subscription to Woodworkers Journal magazine. The best thing about this kit is you get to decide what wood species, color, and ultimate final look the table has. And thanks to the sturdy Get Back Ink hardware, the table comes together in no time at all, helping you make what will surely become the showpiece of your home. Head to getbackink.com for more information. And now it's time for pizza. By the way, this table looks just as good outside as it does inside. So I tried it on the back patio and oh baby, gorgeous. Remember, head to getbackink.com for all the details. <laughs> all right, pack up, Stinky. Here, buddy. <laughs>